It's changed the lives of millions of people here in Hong Kong and throughout the greater Pearl River region. A formidable transport system with its new train station, its high-speed rail, and the new Hong Kong Macau Bridge. In this edition of Spotlight, we check out the impact of all this new infrastructure and the prospects for the future. We begin with the world's longest sea crossing, a bridge built with enough steel for 60 Eiffel Towers, along with an artificial island and a seven kilometer tunnel to let ships pass over. It's 55 kilometers long, with enough road to cover nearly 100 football fields. Raymond Kong of the Highways Department is project manager of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. Okay. Before this bridge is built, um, People traveling between the three cities have to go around a circuitous route, which is more than 200 kilometers long, and take about four hours through a very heavily trafficked road. With this new bridge, the distance between the three cities are greatly reduced to about 65 kilometers. The bridge is making it much easier to get around in a rapidly growing region of nearly 70 million people, connecting it with the financial hub of Hong Kong and the convention and entertainment magnet of Macau. This will promote the interactions uh, between the three cities in terms of finance, commerce, uh, logistic, uh, cultural and rec recreational. It's built to last 120 years, but what about all that severe weather? The builders didn't have to wait long to find out. The last storm was only passed through us in September, and just a month later, we can open the bridge. So um, we will say the whole bridge itself and our ports have been put to a severe test, and we passed through it in flying colors. On the Hong Kong end of the bridge, we get to a wave-shaped building for customs and immigration, the so-called Passenger Clearance Building, or PCB, near the airport. It processes about 60,000 travelers a day between Hong Kong and the mainland. As you can see from this building, we are trying to make it as pleasing, as comfortable, and user-friendly as possible. Then to the massive new rail nexus in the heart of Hong Kong called West Kowloon Station. Having opened in September, it's a focal point for many of the city's more than 12 million daily commuters, as well as longer distance travelers via high-speed rail to Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and beyond. The architect is Andrew Bromberg, a Hong Kong resident from Colorado. So some people call this a dragon. Why is that? I've overheard some locals say that. Okay. that these older couples were looking at climbing up it and they wondered if the two dragons met at the top. The whole station was kind of about reconciling all these connections and bringing them forward into the terminus. So if you want to think about a terminus station, all the railroad lines coming in and converging together, that's what the aesthetic was kind of about, all the converging railroads coming in and facing out towards this beautiful skyline that we have. Finally, Hong Kong is already the world's biggest tourist city, some 30 million visitors a year, about double that of Paris. And at a recent international tourism convention here, the new transport nexus stirred excitement of the prospects. Jason Wong is chairman of Hong Kong's Travel Industry Council. And right now, with the help of the bridge, you can access to the Peripheral Delta within three hours in for most of the major cities in Peripheral Delta. I think that will be a great breakthrough. What kinds of tourists are you targeting? Because a lot of tourists come from China, but they also come, of course, from abroad. International visitors, when they come over to Hong Kong to have meetings or conventions, they might be more than happy to extend their trip to a, a side trip to uh, these major attractions uh, uh, outside Hong Kong for, for a, a long weekend. We take a glass-bottom cable car to the top of Lantau Island with views of the Hong Kong-Macau Bridge. On the way, we met Australian tourists Phil and Maura Davies and their children. You would think it should be cheaper not having the floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we came here because it's sort of a stopover on the way through to mm -hmm. uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to experience culture and yeah. something completely different, something we've never been. That's great. Yeah. So. Mixing culture with business, the chance to work hard and play hard, is what Hong Kong and the region are aiming at in attracting ever more international visitors with a state-of-the-art transport network. That's all for now on Spotlight. From all of us here on the Euronews team, we say choi gin, see you later, and thanks for watching.